Net Zero by 2050 is an incredible endeavor that we need to create and, and solve. And I think most of the people coming to this conference and looking ahead in the future don't really still see a full solution with everything that we have. And when we look at uh, the problem and thinking about climate change, uh, scientists were discussing 1.5 degrees and I think today people are saying, well, let's just stop it at 2 degrees uh, increase and, and still we're in a, quite a difficult uh, position to do it. We need to in, reduce CO2 emissions by a lot uh, by 2030 in order to just start getting there. And uh, by 2050, uh, so many renewables and other sources of clean energy need to be introduced into the market in order to really resolve this. When we look at how we uh, create greenhouse gas emissions, and this is uh, how usually it's, uh, it's uh, around the globe. Transportation is about 14% and manufacturing 28, 21%. Building, cement, uh, and, and these kind of uh, things are, are about 6%. And when you look at agriculture, 24%. Antita will not probably solve that. But electricity generation is, is 25%. And that's a lot. And when you look at uh, the mobility, some people are saying, okay, we're moving into EVs, and uh, that's going to put a strain on the electricity demand and demand is growing extremely fast and we know that it's going to even grow faster and in the mobility uh, uh, realm most of the companies are saying by 2050 it will be all EV so where is the energy going to come from and when you look at CO2 emissions by sector in the mobility well that's how it looks and trucks today is 34 percent automobiles is 40 percent and, and these are big numbers uh, eventually aviation if we succeed in creating total ev it will be fantastic but we'll see what happens so we're, we're discussing an issue who's very very difficult and to create that kind of energy that we need we need some kind of of baseload energy if uh, electricity demand is going to continue to cross the, the ceiling and continue to go higher and higher, how do we effectively create a solution for that? We, we need energy. It requires a lot of that. And we need clean baseload energy. Intermittent renewables are currently not able to solve it, and they in need of a huge storage necessity. And to combine those two, Still, maybe 2035 is possible, 2050, we're going to have uh, troubles ahead. And in that, uh, fusion, a nuclear based load solution, is a solution. It's clean and it's abundant. And in f nuclear, we have two options the fission one, the breaking of uranium, and the natural that uh, we know we, we exists already and, and is used but has its problems, safety and waste. Nuclear fusion doesn't, and nuclear fusion has the possibility to create a, uh, a solution. It's an endless source of energy. It's the most abundant source in the universe, and it's simply taking hydrogen, heavy hydrogen, combining them together, fusing them, creating helium, and an enormous amount of, enormous amount of energy coming out. Very difficult to solve, but I believe it will be solved this decade. There are many startups and many other uh, companies are uh, progressing quite fast to create that kind of solutions. When we look a little bit about the history of fusion uh, progression, it started in the 40s. Creating fusion has been done uh, throughout the decades. The problem was always get more energy out than energy in. And in that process, anti-tau, we looked at the current technologies, new technologies that are now in this decade arrived, and how do we solve key issues within the solutions, and we manage to understand how to get to an optimal plasma regime that we think will succeed in creating a lot of energy out in a sustainable way and bring clean energy uh, to the world. We're part and members of the FIA, the Fusion Industry Association, which is uh, in the U.S. working a lot in uh, creating the right regulatory uh, uh, area and the right uh, space and ecosystem uh, around the globe, actually, as well, 
uh, and we're part of that and happy to uh, uh, collaborate and work with many of the other uh, startups and uh, facilities. Anti-Tau's fusion approach goes a little different and I think innovatively creates and possibly will create compact fusion solution. We're talking a 10 to 20 megawatt power station, not hundreds of megawatts and not gigawatt power station, hopefully going into something small, preferably a container size system, but that's as a vision. It enables you to go off-grid, micro-grid, rural areas, some faraway islands and things like that. And also a multi-use optionality that really enables us to create more potential for, for solutions that today don't even have and really make democratizing energy worldwide. It's a huge endeavor. It's not a simple thing to solve. Uh, but we believe, first of all, that fusion is the right solution. I think nature gave that solution and we need as humanity to really harvest it correctly. Eventually, we will be solving it. Hopefully, the sooner the better. We're very happy to be the lead here in Israel. We're the Israeli nuclear uh, uh, fusion company, the first one and right now the only one uh, did our Series A moving forward very quickly, building the team, building the capacity. We believe we can be a leader in this because of the small size, which is enabled by our uh, unique uh, capability or unique uh, uh, heating mechanisms. Clean, safe energy, we discussed that. This is hydrogen. Nobody owns the fuel. It comes from the ocean. Nobody sits on a mine with the fuel. And 10 to 20 megawatts we discussed, and also a faster and cheaper system. The smaller the system, the cheaper it is, the less infrastructure it demands, and so you can move faster in deployment as well as, as build it in a, a cost-effective way. And humanity, I believe, is closing in on fusion this decade, and it will be solved by someone. I hope it's us, but I will uh, uh, applaud to anyone who does succeed. This is super important for us as humanity to really decarbonize uh, the globe. Energy independence equals energy security. In my background of 30 years in the Israeli Navy and, and retiring as an admiral, energy security, energy independence is super critical. Eventually, it's human security. It comes out all the way to a personal level that we know that we wake up, we have enough energy, we can do what we really want to do and the well-being of our uh, kids and, and future generations. Super important. I think there are quite a few options of decarbonizing uh, the globe or decarbonizing our atmosphere. And I think first and foremost, we, we, think we need to think, are we maximizing the natural decarbonization capability and solutions? I'm a tech guy. I'm in high tech. I'm, we're doing technology, but there are other ways as well. And I saw even a few startups that actually plant trees with drones to actually return into natural stuff. This is crazy, but it's amazing and it's beautiful. And we are returning and using natural capability. And what would be the best technologies uh, ahead to really decarbonize other than natural uh, capabilities? And where does that technology will get its energy? Eventually, technology that needs and tries to decarbonize needs the energy somewhere from, and we want that energy to be clean. Looking ahead, as energy entrepreneurs, we all need to really strive to create a lot of clean energy, abundant, and to democratize energy worldwide. We want everybody to breathe air and have energy almost in the same way. That would be fantastic. Thank you and enjoy the panel.